You see, he thought that, whoo, he thought that, I guess, I could, he'd come out and he said, folks, I got some good news and I got some bad news. He said, which you want first? I said, give me the good. He said, well, he said, we got your car in there and we found the problem. That's the good news. Now, he said, the bad news is it's going to cost $554 to get it fixed. I looked at him and grinned. I said, go ahead, fix it. He said, that doesn't bother you? I said, why? Should it bother me? I said, I'm wanting to get home. You know what? On the way home to heaven, sometimes it's going to cost you something. It's going to cause you a little trouble. Amen. There's going to be a few stops along the way. But praise the Lord, let me tell you, it's worth it all, hallelujah, to be his child, to walk with him the last long mile. It's worth it all, oh, just to walk a mile with him. Oh, because his name is Jesus, the Savior of the world. And I wasn't a king, but praise the Lord, those credit cards, they got money in them. I just handed it to him. I said, he, he just squeezed $554 out of that thing. There wasn't no problem at all. <laughs> Praise God. And, but I want you to know that debt debt's been paid now. That was about seven years ago. And it's paid off. And, and God took care of it. But you know what? Along the way, on your journey home, some things happen. But don't get discouraged. Just smile at them and tell them that you're not fooling with an ordinary person, devil. You're fooling with one of God's children. You're fooling with a king. Hallelujah. You're fooling with a king, a king's son. And I'll go to my father and praise the Lord if I don't have it. I know he's got a storehouse of riches that are full and he can reach up on that mantle. He can get me the medicine I need. He can get me two coils to put in a Lincoln. He can give me money to pay that credit card off. He can take care of me. You know why? Because I've committed myself unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I haven't committed myself to building Trump Towers. I haven't committed myself uh, to this world to take care of me. I've committed myself to the Lord Jesus Christ to lift me up when I'm down. I mean to make me well when I'm sick, to make me happy when I'm sad, and give me joy when it don't seem like there's any can be found. You can find some at the foot of the cross because Jesus Christ, you're his child. He's a king, and you know what? That makes you a prince, and you've got his last name, which is Jesus. Commit yourself unto the Lord. Oh, praise God. And I'll be quick, but there was a man in the Bible. His name was Saul. He started committing himself unto other things. You know the problem and trouble Saul ended up in? But let me tell you, he was one time an anointed of God. David was his enemy. But finally, David uh, obeyed the Lord and he committed himself to God and, and Saul and David got back uh, together and Saul said, David, I'll not hunt you anymore. David stood by Saul in a cave and cut off his skirt and he could have run that sword through Saul who was seeking to kill him on the spot. But David said, I will not touch the anointed of the Lord no matter what he's done. David didn't have to kill him. Saul fighting an old battle should have been over years ago on Mount Gilboa. And there him and his sons all died. There is him and his sons all died. But David still knew he was royalty. Here comes this young man into David's presence. Thought David was going to bless him. Thought David was going to give him a reward. He said David saw dead. He said he did. How did it happen? Well, he even lied about how it happened. He said Saul had run through, thrown the sword through him. Well, he did, but an armor bearer uh, finished it up on Saul's command. But this young man said, I saw him, and so I just took my sword and finished him up. And he thought, David said, oh, you killed my enemy. I'm going to make you this, or I'm going to make you that. This man had not committed himself to God, so he got his life taken from him. David told the young men, to, to, to go ahead, take his life. They took the sword and he lost everything. Folks, I don't care how much you got today. 
I don't care how big you might think you are. If you don't have God, someday you're going to lose every last bit of it. But thank God, you that have committed yourself unto the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to gain. Woo, hallelujah. That man didn't get a thing. But there was another little fella that was Saul's grandson. When David said, I want to be good to the household of the Lord. He said, is there anybody around here? Anybody that I can show favor to because of Saul's honor, because of Jonathan's honor. Jonathan had a son who was crippled. He was married. He had a family in Lodabar. He wasn't, he didn't have anything. He was living in squalor. But let me tell you, he, he came from royalty. Friend, this morning, you may not know how you're going to pay the next bill. You might be uh, up against a problem that's not financial. It might be something else, a relationship or whatever. You don't know what's going to happen. But I'll tell you this. If you commit yourself to the Lord, you commit yourself to God, and God will bring it to pass. If you'll just be patient and wait, my God will bring it to pass. You know why? You say, why a preacher would he do it? Because you're committed to him and you are of royalty. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo, you're of royalty this morning. You're not some old cloud hopper that the devil can walk all over and get away with. When the devil walks all over you, he ought to shake in his shoes because God's going to get him for it. The devil can't walk all over you if you're committed to God and get away with it. So to make a long story short as you get a song. They said there's a little cripple boy, man down in Lodabar. David said, bring him. He's going to sit at my table. He said, you all take the crops when you harvest them and everything. And you take care of his family. You feed him in his house. But he said as far as, as Mephibosheth is concerned, he's going to sit at my table. Brother, you didn't get to sit at the king's table in those days unless you were invited. They'd cut your head off if you walked in and didn't hold out the scepter to you. But he said, you bring that little dirty, filthy boy. Gentlemen, that the Bible don't say it that way. That's what he meant. Hungry, been eating out of the garbage cans. He gonna sit down here at the table. Can't you imagine, Mephibosheth? Man, pass me that fried chicken. You know, give me a big piece of that cake over there. Oh, hallelujah! Listen, you may look like or think like, and people may tell you. That you're eating out of a garbage can this morning just because things are not going right in your life or because you're sick or some of your family's sick. I'm here to tell you today on the authority of God's word that it's not true. That God this morning, he will bring it to pass. You say, preacher, how about when you lose somebody and you love them so? There's a time of mourning, but then there's a time to thank God that you're going to meet them again on the other shore. Praise the Lord. When the devil tries to come around, put that old down syndrome on me for people I've lost that I knew went to heaven, I just point him to glory. And then I, I start getting feeling real good inside because it's just going to be a few days till Tommy and I get back together. Woo, hallelujah. Glory to God. It's going to be a few days, some funerals I've had out of this church that we're going to have church again. Praise the Lord. But thank God, listen, thank God. Now, now listen, this is probably the greatest blessing of all. If you go first and I come later and I walk in this gate and you're there to greet me, there's one great blessing that you're going to see. I won't never have to listen to that man preach again. <laughs> see, there's blessings everywhere. God bless you as we stand today. You love the Lord today. Commit yourself to God. Things will get better. They'll get smoother. The devil will fight harder, but you'll have a bigger army. Amen? You have a need today. Would you come? Let God touch you this morning.